I've had this camera for about a year now. I've put a lot of roast to it. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this camera. If you're watching this video, you either just bought it or you're thinking about buying it. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the history of this camera, talking to you about the body of the camera, talking to you about the shooting experience, as well as some of the likes and dislikes when it comes to actually using this camera. Let's dive right into this one. This camera is a 35 millimeter rangefinder made by the Ernst Lights Company in Wetzlar, Germany. Based on the research that I did, around 82 to 88,000 of these cameras were made, produced between 1957 and 1968. A fun fact about this camera is about 1,500 to 2,000 of these cameras were made right here where I live in Canada. The lens mount is a Leica M mount which is a bayonet type. They were made as a brother for the Leica M3 and were supposed to be a cheaper option for people looking to get into the Leica system. Until this day, it's still one of the cheapest way to get into the Leica M lineup but we're going to be talking about price a little bit later on in this video so stay tuned. In terms of its place in the overall Leica M lineup, it was the second one ever made with the M3 coming first. In terms of the body of the camera, the body is constructed of brass which has been chromed as well as a cloth covering that keeps the body protected. That cloth covering kind of looks like leather and if you take a look at my particular version of this camera, it has started chipping away a little bit. Now these are easily replaceable with parts but for now I just have gaff tape over mine. I'll probably be buying a new skin at some point later on down the line, but for now, the gaff tape is doing what it needs to do, I think. When it comes to the Leica M2, there were two specific versions that were made. There was one with a timer and one without a self-timer. The one that I have right here is the one without a self-timer. The M2 has a rangefinder with a 0.72 magnification and frame lines for 35, 50, and 90 millimeter lenses. Now let's dive right into the body of the camera itself so I can show you exactly what the body looks like and what the buttons do on this camera. We're gonna start right up here with this top plate. Over here you have the frame counter index. It literally just tells you what frame number you are on. Over here you have the frame counter. On the Leica M2, you don't have your typical frame counter that you see on other cameras. This one is the most unique one I've ever seen with the button being able to be adjusted by itself. Now this one doesn't go the other way and you won't accidentally like change the frame counter on this. But for example, if you're shooting with a 24 exposure uh, film in your camera, it will end on 24. And if you're now inputting a new film into your camera, you're going to have to manually adjust this. On other cameras, when you open up the, the back plate of the camera, this automatically resets. On the Leica M2, it does not, so you have to manually adjust it every time you input a new film into the camera. Or sometimes when you end your, your roll, you usually end up on 36, and by the time you uh, do the exposures and move it up, it gets to like zero. So you don't always have to do it if you input 36 exposures. Or if you have 24 and then you input a 36, or if you have 24 and you input another 24 exposure, you have to manually adjust it. On top of the frame counter, you have the shutter release cable. Press that button to release the shutter. The Leica M2 has one of the most pleasing shutter sounds. This is the frame advancer. This just allows you to advance the next frame. And once you, if you see right here, if you advance the frame, the frame counter moves forward as well. That's a nice little thing that comes with the M2. Next to the frame advancer, you have your shutter speed control. The Leica M2 has shutter speeds from bulb all the way up to 1000. It doesn't go above that. And the shutter, the button right here, right on top of the cold shoe mount, you have this little arrow over here that shows you what your shutter speed is on. The shutter speed goes in both directions, but you can't go from 1000 to bulb. You have to go all the way to the other side. It can't go from bulb to 1000. So that's what you have there on top of it. Mine is engraved at the top. M2, this is a number 938559. Leica, these are just some engravings on the top of the camera. This is a cold shoe mount. You can put your flash on there. We're going to talk about the other buttons in a little bit. This right here, which is 
one of the most annoying parts of this camera this is your rewind knob so on other film cameras you have a thing that you can like turn around in a circle but this one is pretty manual so you lift this up and turn 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 in the winter time this is probably the most annoying part of using this camera but that is how you rewind your your camera these two buttons right here red dots right here this uh this spin around when you have film in the camera to let you know that your film is advancing i'm going to show you how to load film into the camera in a little bit but we're just talking about the body of the camera right now now let's talk about the front of this camera for now i'm going to take off this lens i'm sorry i do not have uh, like her glass, I can only afford Voigtlander right now, so that's why I have a Voigtlander. As I said as well, this is just gaff tape to cover up the breakage in the... Let me take this off so you can see what's underneath that, actually. It's just the body of the camera, which is just some rust underneath that. I'm going to put that back on there. There we go. So, talking about the body on the front here, this is... The, re the rewind knob so once your film is completely done you press this and this allows this to release and you can wind the film back so this is your rewind knob over here you have your lens lock release which allows you to release the lens on the camera on the bottom here you have your lens mounting flange which is just that little thing that you see there and then next to it you have on top of it sorry you have your range finder arm which allows you once you click in the lens to for the rangefinder to know what lens you have in there and on here you have your frame selector on the Leica M2 you have frame selectors for 35 50 and 90 millimeters uh, you can't do 28 and you can't do anything longer than 90 millimeters it just becomes hard to focus using the rangefinder on the camera up here you have your two rangefinder windows this is the main one you look through. I'm not quite sure what that one does, but it is called a rangefinder window. And next to the rangefinder window right here, you have your illuminating window, which I believe allows lights to pass through the rangefinder for you to get proper illumination on your camera. And that's pretty much everything you have at the front of the Leica M2 right here. Now let's talk about the back of the camera. Starting with right here, the top left, this is your range viewfinder eyepiece. This is where you put your eye to in order to look through the camera to see what your what the rangefinder sees. And looking through that, you're going to be able to line up with the lens, line up what you're able to see on the camera and take your shot. Over here, you have your electronic flash socket. Next to it is your flash lamp socket. On top of that, you have your cold shoe mount. I don't think I've ever actually put anything on there, but yeah, that's your cold shoe mount. Over here, you have your film type indicator. Doesn't really do much other than let you know, uh, help you remember what film stock you have in there and what speed that is. On the sides of the camera, you have your neck strap logs that allow you to put in whatever neck strap that you want or hand strap that you want for this camera. On the bottom of the camera, you have the base plate the base plate is where you load your film into now to take out the base plate you all you have to do is lift this up twist it and this comes out once you take out the base plate underneath the base plate this is what it looks like i'm going to put that down and then you take this out now this is the most interesting part of the camera this is the the gate the shutter gate once you take that shot, it advances. That's what it looks like. Nice. In here, this is where this is where you input your film. I'm going to show you how to load film in in a second. These are the sprockets. This is just this is just an indicator to show you how to put in the film into the camera. Now let's talk about loading film into the camera. To load film in the camera, you're going to need to take this out. This is just a film loader. The first thing you want to do is make sure that both the top of the film and the top of this are on the same side. If you have it upside down, it's not going to load properly. Both of them need to be on the same side. So you take 
with the film side facing out, you're going to see over here an arrow. That arrow is what you need to do. That's how you need to put the film in. And you're also going to see like a little sliver on the side right there that you push the film into. So you take that, you push the film in there. Make sure you see it. As I push that in, you're going to be able to see the arrow a lot more. And then you have it. So the back of the film should be facing out that way to the arrow. And then you got to pull it out a little bit, just like, just a little pinch, just like that. Because you have to basically line it up into the camera. So once you have that in there, so you're also going to see on this side, it shows you exactly what to do. You put that, the film in there. You got to stretch it out a little bit. I'm going to need to use both hands. Usually I place it down on my lap. So you're going to need to just take that in, slide that in there. Both of them should just go in just like that. And you should see the film on the back. Now, once both of them are in, all you have to do is press that and it should advance. Right. Close the back. Take your base plate. Now this part should line up with the film insert right there. Put that in there. Make sure this part is also aligned. And then close your base plate. And there you have it. You just load it up your Leica M2. Don't worry about the film that's in there. That's just dummy film for now. I use it for my demonstrations. Put the lens on. And your camera is all good to go, ready to shoot. When it comes to the shooting experience for this camera, this camera is a beautiful camera to shoot with. This is my everyday carry. And what that means for me is that I take it with me every single place that I'm going, whether I'm going to work, whether I'm going to the grocery store, whether I'm taking my daughter to dance. This camera comes with me every single where that I'm going. The shutter on this is very quiet, but loud enough that when you are taking a photo, you can feel the vibrations go through the camera and the, the winding mechanism of advancing the film is something that's very tactile. This camera is a fully mechanical camera. What that means that there's no battery needed for any functions in this camera. Overall shooting experience with this camera, it's fun, it's a breeze to use, it catches the eye because it's a Leica, but also because of the chrome body and the overall design making it look sleek and easy on the eye. Now let's talk about some of the likes and dislikes when it comes to actually using this camera. The first thing being the smooth operation and shooting experience. I briefly just touched upon the shooting experience with this camera. It's smooth, it's easy to use, and it's very effective at doing what I needed to do, which is shooting mostly street photography. The second thing I liked about this camera is the price. When it comes to the Leica M lineup, this is probably the cheapest camera that you can get in order to get into the Leica M system. When I originally bought this camera, I bought it for $2,700 Canadian, and it came with a lens and six rows of Portra 400. Now the prices always fluctuate going up and down, but when it comes to a Leica camera, the value always stays with it. So if you're looking to get into the Leica M system and you don't have too much money to spend, I would definitely suggest taking a look at the Leica M2 and also the M5 if you're into a bigger body style of system. The third thing that I like about this camera is the ease of use. It literally sits right in my hand as I'm out in the streets taking photos. Once I set my zone focus, once I have my, my aperture set, once I have my shutter speed set, all I literally have to do is press the shutter and advance the film. It's easy to use for the style of photography that I like. It's easy to use for anyone that hasn't really used the rangefinder system before. There is no light meter in this camera, so you do have to learn how to read light. You can use an external light meter on your phone or whatever app that you have, and also you can actually buy a light meter. But once you have all those things sorted, using this camera is a breeze. The fourth thing is the rangefinder patch and the rangefinder system on this Leica M2. Before using this camera, I had not used a rangefinder system before. Now it does take a lot of getting used to, but when you get used to it, it's the best thing in the world. The first time I looked through this rangefinder patch, I was like, oh wow. Not only is it big, it's pretty clear. It's like looking at the real world. 
doesn't even feel like you're looking through a camera it feels like you're looking through a real world and once you line up everything and get a shot it just feels real good on the inside now let's talk about a couple of dislikes that I have for this camera and unfortunately there are two dislikes that I have for this camera the first being changing film here in Canada it gets cold for about seven months of the year and I'm always out in the world shooting sheet photography, shooting portraits. I'm always out in the cold doing the things that I love to do. Just take photos. Now, when it comes to changing the film, you literally have to take out the spool, get your film, input the spool. Now, I can do the change in like five minutes, at most five minutes. And my, my record is about a minute. I can get it done in about a minute. But when you're out there in the cold, you have to literally like take out the spool, Put it in get your hands get get your hands out of your gloves and just put it in it just it's a lot there's a lot of steps involved in changing the film that aren't good for cold weather conditions and in the country where i live it's cold for most of the year so that's just one of the little dislikes that i have for the camera it's not a big deal but it's something worth noting the second dislike i have for this camera is this rewind knob this rewind knob is the most annoying knob I've ever used on any camera. And I've used a lot of cameras. And the thing about this rewind knob is that you literally have to go and go and go and go and go and go. I've counted it. It takes me about 40 twists to actually rewind a 36 exposure roll of film. And that's like really spinning and spinning and spinning. And it starts to leave an imprint on my hand. I can really, I can feel it in my finger now talking about it because I've rewound so much film in my time of using this camera. For me, it's not really, it is, no, I'm not gonna lie. It is an issue. It is something that I wish wasn't present because on other cameras, you can literally just use the, the spool thing. But on this camera, you literally have to twist. Now I know they do sell parts to make it a little easier to rewind film. But if you don't have that part, this is something that you should know when it comes to actually using this camera, that the rewind knob is very, very annoying. Those are the likes and dislikes when it comes to actually using this camera. This camera is a wonderful camera. As I said, I put a lot, and I mean a lot of roles to this camera. It's come with me to London, to Paris, to St. Lucia. I take it with me out every day. I shoot with it on the streets. It's been in cold weather, in snow, in the heat, in in rain it's been in all different types of conditions i've taken this camera with me everywhere i love love shooting with this camera getting this camera completely changed my photography and completely changed the way that i see the world would i suggest that you pick one up absolutely definitely if you have the money get this camera also get you some good glass and also depends on what you're using it for make sure you do your research make sure you check what you need to check before you pick this up but if you're thinking about getting one, I definitely suggest getting one. That brings me to the end of this video. If this video has provided you any value. Please make sure you do the things, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. And this goes a long way to making sure I produce more content like this. Until next time, make sure you stay safe. Make sure you should film. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.